It's time for Chicago's annual funny music convention, Fump Fest. This year, we're celebrating Dr. Demento's 50th anniversary with special guest, radio legend Dr. Demento, appearing live and in person. Dr. Demento will be presenting his Festival of Dementia, signing autographs, and hosting the 11th annual Logan Whitehurst Memorial Awards for Excellence in Comedy Music. Fump Fest is taking place August 20th through 22nd at the Western North Shore in Wheeling, Illinois, and will feature performances by Bill Larkin, Carla Albrecht, Steve Goody, Bad Beth and Beyond, The Gothsicles, Ross Child, The Great Luke Ski, Worm Quartet, Insane Ian, Nuclear Bubble Rap, Harry Dalby, Ian Lockwood, and a special appearance by Sulu from The Dr. Demento Show, plus Demented Karaoke, Dumb Parody Ideas, The Fump Showcase, and more. Visit FumpFest.com to register and book your hotel room. That's F-U-M-P-F-E-S-T dot com. Point. Greetings, Internet, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Musician Reacts. My name is Insane Ian, I am a comedy musician and comedy music fan, and this week I'm reacting to three new-to-me comedy music videos. Two of them are new, or relatively new, and one of them is one I meant to react to a couple weeks ago and just really had no way of fitting it in, so I'm doing it now. They are Vanilla Mike with Slice Slice Baby, uh, Vanilla Mike being... Michael Myers, only 90s-ish. Uh, obviously, it's another parody by the Merkins. Uh, followed by John Lajoie's One Thing. Uh, John Lajoie has done a lot of comedy songs and has been away from it for a while and came back with this song. Uh, most people know him from Everyday Normal Guy and also uh, as a cast member of that TV show The League. And then last but not least, uh, we'll be closing with Look at This Poke Snap." by Il Neige. Uh, yet another of Il Neige's songs that I wish I wrote. Uh, <laughs> but if this is your first time here, I try to react to these from a comedy musician's perspective, as I am a comedy musician and this is comedy music. I try to react to these in a way of sometimes analyzing jokes, sometimes analyzing techniques and music video making. Uh, ways to elevate the jokes in the song versus what you do in the visuals, stuff like that. Sometimes I do that, and sometimes it's just good enough where I just sit and laugh at it. So, it varies. And also, because of that, I tend to pause the video. So, uh, if you want to see these videos without me yammering all over them, links are in the description below. Also, if you notice the promo at the beginning of this video, Fump Fest is coming up. Information about that is in the description as well. Uh, I think that's enough dilly-dallying. I think that's enough blatherskite in the beginning of this video, so let's dive in with Vanilla Mike for some old-school 90s hip-hop. Kinda. I already have to give him props for styling the William Shatner mask uh, hair, the wig on the mask, to being like Vanilla Ice's with that one streak of uh, of blonde there. That's a, that's a good touch. And also the clown costumes in the background, uh, what Michael Myers as a child is wearing, it's another good touch. Way in the background there, that pumpkin mask, that's a uh, Halloween 3, which it certainly looks like the uh, the new Halloween Kills is bringing into the fold. They've ignored the other Halloween movies, uh, except for the Halloween sequel that was also called Halloween that came out a couple years ago. Halloween Kills is a sequel to that one, and they there's in the trailer you see some of the masks from Halloween 3, which was a nice touch, I think, a nice homage to the ugly stepchild <laughs> movie, I guess, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, meh. Yo, R.I.P. <laughs> Let's kill it. Slice, you get the dance slice, down, baby. too. The shape. <laughs> I forget what what uh, Vanilla Ice's uh, license plate was in the original Ice Ice Baby video, but it was something with... with uh, him like hey ice or something like that so the shape that works too i mean he is the shape that's what he was called before other things i guess 
chop. Annihilate my victims. Mike is back with the same old obsession. Stalking. Grab a hold of you tightly. Glow like a lantern. Scaring you nightly. The suit. What was that suit? I mean, like, okay, the American flag jacket is straight out of the Vanilla Ice video. Um, but that that suit with the glowing eyes all over it that looks like you you bought it from a Halloween party center just oh that's it's it's so good and so terrible at the same time I love it Mike is back with the same old obsession stalking grab a hold of you tightly glow like a lantern scaring you nightly will I ever stop no glory stroke turn off the lights and I'll show on Halloween I rock a knife and go mental light up the shape and seven nurse in the temple. I gotta give the Merkins some props here for for some of the the lyrical content that they do. Uh, they they really take that theme and run with it. Like every song is is a horror movie slasher singing and sometimes rapping about the movie plot or or. Not even just the movie plot, but the just like the characters' motivations. Like I like to kill, and here's the many ways that I do it. And uh, it's just something very entertaining about that, you know. It's I, I was thinking about this the other day. There's something really interesting about comedy music acts that stick to a theme. You know, most comedy music will come from varying perspectives. You know, you you know as as a comedy musician, the narrator plays different roles. The person who's singing the song, like if you're following a specific act, like Weird Al, for example, Weird Al is never singing any of his songs from the perspective of Weird Al. He's always playing a character in those songs, right? So like the saga begins, he's singing it as Anakin, as uh, as uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, right? So to see a band that actually sings it in the perspective of that band, of that band member, like specifically, like Ninja Sex Party, they're all sung by Danny Sexbang. All the songs are from Danny Sexbang's perspective. So that is is taking that theme and running with it for every song. And the Merkins uh, seem to take the theme of slashers. All of our uh, performers, all of the people in the band, are serial killers from horror movies. Every one of the songs follows that theme, and uh, there's something to be admired with with uh, sticking to that kind of theme in a song, you know, uh, especially for, you know, albums are a kind of thing that not a lot of artists do anymore, but some still do, so it'd be interesting to see if they put out an album of, of the Merkins music with the Slash Street Boys, which is the boy band with all the, the killers, and, you know, Freddie had a solo song, and Vanilla Mike has a solo song, and I think... There's there's been a couple other killers that they've had that had so, uh, solo songs too that were parodies. So it's it's very interesting to to see. It's all thematically just slashers. I dig that. Damn, blood dripping from my eye wounds. I'm killing insane in my mask in a jumpsuit, deadly. When I slay a whole family, anything less than your death is a hell to me. Trick it or treat it. So happy holiday. Shoot me six times and I'll still walk away. <laughs> Good attention to detail too. Also, uh, another attention to detail for the video that I dig. Number one, he's doing all the Vanilla Ice dance moves. Dance moves. Uh, number two, uh, they shot it, uh, or, or at least they posted the video in uh, the original aspect ratio that most music videos and most movies were viewed at the era. Not the movies. Movies were still filmed in widescreen, but when you watched them in TV, they were pan and scan because they fit... The shape of a TV. TVs weren't widescreen back in the day, kids. Uh, you know, they were square. And a lot of music videos were shot at that aspect ratio. So this is in fitting with the era uh, in which they're parodying, which is a nice touch. It's a nice, nice uh, thematic way to keep things tied together. I dig that. No, no, and also, their backup singers, all three of the masks from Halloween. Halloween 3. That suit, man. I dig it. Stroke, turn off the lights, and I'll show. On Halloween, I rock a knife and go mental. Light up the shape and seven nurse in the temple. Also, the Haddonfield High School sweatshirt. Another excellent touch. Damn, blood dripping from my eye wounds. I'm killing insane in my mask in a jumpsuit. Deadly. When I slay a whole family, anything less than your death is a hell to me. Trick it or treat it. So happy holiday. Shoot me six.
six times and I'll still walk away. Lori has a problem, she can't solve it. Check out the stain, gonna need to resolve it. <laughs> Check out the stain, gonna need to resolve it, because resolve is a carpet cleaner. It's subtle. I'll kill ya. Oh, perfect. Because he's not going to say vanilla. Because he's vanilla Mike, not vanilla Slice. God, do you remember Slice? It was like, like uh, Pepsi's version of, of Sprite? Or is it Coke's version? I forget who makes... Coke makes Sprite. So I think Pepsi made Slice or something like that. But Slice was, was another lemon-lime beverage and vanilla Slice just sounds really tasty and refreshing right now for some reason. I'm old is what I'm saying. Uh, but no, no, the ad libs where he's always repeating vanilla and then having it be I'll kill ya. It's just a nice touch. I dig it. And, and the, the, the sets that they're using, uh, you know, dancing by Judith Myers is grave here. And, uh, one of the previous videos that I, I reacted to of theirs was, uh, their Freddy Krueger Dreamer's Paradise, uh, song, which was a Gangster's Paradise parody. And that used a lot of clips from the actual movies. So far in this, they have not, at least not that I've recognized anyway. So it's a nice touch to, to have every element of it be something freshly shot for the video, too. And the warehouse dancing. Because this is what our budget could afford in the 90s. Now that your arteries pumping With the blade stabbed in and the teenagers slumping Quick to the joint, to the joint, I'm breaking Eating puppies like a pound of bacon Eating puppies? Does Michael Meyer eat dogs in the movies? Did, did I miss that element of it? Or did I burn it from my memory? Because, oh... Uh... Yeah, you somebody fill me in in the comments below. I'm sure it's going to happen. That's a thing. I love the subtle... Uh, Hanging from the rearview mirror, the Merkins logo, as well as the Myers mask. Now that your arteries pumping, with the blade stabbed in and the teenagers slumping, quick to the joint, to the joint, I'm breaking, eating puppies like a pound of bacon, killing them. They ain't quick, they tremble. I'm so crazy, born with a thorn symbol. Smith's grow. I was a cooped up psycho. I'm so crazy, born with a thorn symbol. So clearly, excuse me. <laughs> clearly, they're not. Uh, they're they're going with the original run of movies, not not the newer uh, movies that ignored two through, what was it, six or seven. Uh, so the original run of movies, like by, by movie five, to explain how Michael Myers, A, lived through everything, and, and B, why he was so hell-bent on killing all the time. He had, like, there was this occult thorn symbol that was on him that they, they tied into this whole other thing, and Paul Rudd, and all this other stuff. Uh, Paul Rudd's character in those movies, not Paul Rudd, the real person. I wanted to clarify on that. Uh, I think that was five. I, honestly, they all kind of blur together after four. So, actually, even four kind of blur... They all kind of blur together after the first two. <laughs> and the third one, like I said before, has nothing to do with the Michael Myers story. They wanted it to be an anthology thing originally, but two, they kind of demanded to be a follow-up on Michael Myers' thing. And then after that, they all went, no, let's just go back to Michael Myers, because three didn't do well. Um, but paying homage to it in the newer versions of things is cool to me. I'm babbling. We're going to get back to this. Yo, and when I stroll, I only walk slow-mo. Kill it. <laughs> it's a 5.0 with my mask dropped down so my face won't show. Girlies on the sidelines, screaming speed kills guy. Did you stop? Yeah. Then I sped by, crept on. Pursuing down the next block. I busted left, then I headed to the headstock. That block was dead, yo. So I continued to do not slay. Orange Grove Avenue. Play <laughs> <sighs> Just, there, there's a whole bunch of, uh, like, a lot of people in parody will keep certain lyrics the same as the original so as they uh to kind of have that that tie-in of familiarity you know like if the original lyrics kind of fit the theme of your parody some some parody artists will keep those original lyrics in play and i'm not not saying that direct lyric what we just stopped on was the same thing but it's also strikingly similar to to the original song too 
Uh, so, like, the, the whole thing about the, the blocks and the, 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 block was dead, yo, so I continue to do canine slay, the, the canine, uh, uh, canine slay, he's talking about killing the dog, that's different, but, uh, like, there's, there's certain, I can't even get back to it, and I can't think of it, what it was now, but there were certain lyrics that, that kind of reminded me of the lyrics from the original song, and keeping them similar to that also brings back that recognition of, oh, yeah, this is a parody of that, and tying those lines together is, is, it's recognize it's recognition humor where you know a lot of things go oh yeah i remember that and your humor is based on you know you're you, you getting the joke is based on remembering the original a lot of parodies uh run that line like some people want parody to stand on its own where you don't need to know the original to get the jokes and some parodies like this one and some that i've done myself uh rely strongly on knowing the original song to help enhance the jokes in the parody um, also, he's wearing a Strode Real t-shirt, which is also great. So, uh, love the attention to detail in the visuals. That's good stuff. Hey, Orange Grove Avenue. Flames were high, still fill cemeteries. Drop dead lovers, I drive obituaries. Hellish. Cause I'm out ending lives. Bay with the gauge and the killer with the knife. Stab it. I got Bob on the wall. They slump when I kill cause I'm full of hate, y'all. Got Bob on the wall. It's when he kills the guy in the first movie with the world's longest, strongest knife. Takes his hand off the night and he's just stuck on the wall. That was, I mean, it's a great moment, but weirdly physically impossible. Um. <laughs> Gunshots rang out that I fell. I'm still alive, guess you need more shells. Fall There's in. Lewis in the background. No real fast thunder in the yard, slammed on the grass. Bodies to bodies, the funeral's packed. I'm trying to get away for the doctor's back. Lewis on the scene, you know what I mean? I slash them up, I'm hunting other sex fiends. Lori has a problem, <laughs> she can't solve it. Check out the stain, gonna need to resolve it. I would have liked them to do a different rhyme there. Uh, that's a, that's a, a, a personal thing that I, you know, it's not, it's not a rule for comedy music, but a personal thing I like about comedy music is it doesn't have to stick by standard structure of song composition, where... You know, if you have most normal songs will have a repeating chorus or a repeating uh, uh, pre-chorus in this case. Uh, you know, Lori can't resolve it. Check out the stain. I'm actually going to need to resolve it. That's the pre-chorus. That's the line that goes in before the ice ice baby or slice slice baby chorus. Um, in a comedy song, because you are writing new lyrics to a pre-existing thing, you can change it up each and every time. It doesn't have to be the same every time. If you changed up, that gives you more room to put more jokes in. Uh, as a personal preference, at least that's what I try to do in a lot of my songs. Uh, so to have uh, the same thing re repeat, I mean, obviously the, the hook is going to repeat because Slice Slice Baby is what the song is. And there's not a lot of room to move stuff around on such the simple hook of Slice Slice Baby repeating. But your pre-chorus, you can throw in a different similar rhyme joke into there. Um, you don't have to, obviously. They didn't. They didn't have to. But uh, as, a, as a writer, that's kind of what I try to lean toward doing when I do parody. Um, for an example of that, check out my new song, Kang. Shameless plug. Okay. Anyway. And they got the, the sample loop really well recreated, too. Loading the gravestone into his back seat. Like, there's a whole lot of elements in this that are parodying the original music video as well, which is kind of, again, like I say in a lot of these videos before, you're, you're building on enhancing the jokes and the lyrics. Um, in that section, he's talking about, he's describing a lot of things that have happened in some of the other movies and, uh, and, and you know, his basis as a killer and whatnot. But they're also loading a tombstone into the car, which I haven't seen the original Vanilla... vanilla. <laughs> I haven't seen the original Vanilla Ice video in many years. I think I maybe 
only watched it when it came out. <laughs> I don't I don't think I've seen it in something like 30 years at this point. Uh, 90 to 2000, 2000 to... Two, okay, 20 years, all right. <laughs> Date myself here. Uh, but uh, I don't remember too many elements of that, but that seems like it's random enough that it was a direct parody. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure someone will. It's the internet. I'll see it down in the count comments. This tradition is real. Corrupted by thorn, it was hell where my sis slept, wielding a knife. When my mom wept, deadly, they run from the shade. Slides <laughs> like a ninja, cut with a scalpel blade so fast. All the victims say, damn, with my knife dripping blood, I'm just killing all I can. Creep and I t <laughs> Thank you for helping me. Now I'm gonna stab you. <laughs> when my mom wept, deadly, they run from the shade. Slides like a ninja, cut with a scalpel blade so fast. All the victims say, damn, with my knife dripping blood, I'm just killing all I can. Creep in October in a one piece suit. I also like the nice touch that Resolve has the TM on it in the lyrics at the bottom. That's that's a good move. And, and props to the to the Rob Van Winkle dancing. That's uh. Incorporating knife swings into those dances is, Yo, wait till Halloween. as they would say, proper. Word to your sister. <laughs> oh, nice. The, the kill strode is a too cold. Bravo. Nice uh, credits there, giving uh, giving props to the people who manipulated the mask and hair. Excellent stuff. That was that was excellent. Well done, guys. <laughs> Five point oh Mustang, courtesy of Bart Carmichael at Dumpster Express Junk Removal and Holloway. <laughs> hey, man, you gotta get your props where you can. <laughs> That's uh, leave long credits on this one. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, Slice Slice Baby by the Merkins, aka Vanilla Mike. Uh, definitely on that 90s hip-hop uh, Vanilla Ice emulation, in, not just in the song, but in the visuals too. That's a excellently done. And the single cover there, that's great. All right. Next up is John Lajoie's One Thing. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of John Lajoie's music. He has his comedy music, and then he has his serious music, which I something about Wolfie. I can't remember the name of his actual band now. It is like is Wolfie okay or something like that? It's a line from Terminator Two about the dog Wolfie. Uh, the dog's name is not Wolfie in the movie. It's the line that that the Terminator says to the mom to try to find out if the mom is real or not. If you, By the way, if you haven't seen Terminator 2, where these are weird spoilers to suddenly drop on you. Um, but anyway, that's what his regular non-comedic band is. His comedy music is just under his name, John Lajoie. And if you haven't checked out anything by John Lajoie, and this is your first song, uh, Welcome to This Madness, uh, and go check out uh, Everyday Normal Guy, uh, and parts one and two, they're excellent, as is all of his uh, comedy stuff. And clearly we're going with something pandemic here with the mask. I'm finally vaccinated. I can barely believe it. We're not through it just yet, but we're beginning to see the light. They're saying I can go outside, get back to my regular life. It's a miracle. I'm so grateful. We're getting to the other side. And here's an element that I really enjoy in original comedy songs is... The beginning of the song, and I don't know how far this is going to go into this, uh, and I've talked about this sometimes on this before too, the beginning of the song puts you into that false sense of security where, like, there's no jokes yet. Is this going to be a comedy song? Are they going to punch you with the comedy hit when it hits the chorus, before it hits the chorus, after the first chorus? Uh, an artist that does that a lot is Stephen Lynch. Uh, these songs that sound like, for lack of a better term, regular songs, I don't want to say real songs, because these comedy music is still real music. I should start making shirts that say that comedy music is real music. Uh, but 
<laughs> but they, you know, they, they try to give you the, the false sense of security that you're not listening to a funny song, and then suddenly they hit you with the joke right when you don't expect it, because it, the lead-up to it has been kind of semi-serious. Uh, and then, you know, it gets to that flip, and you're like, oh, that's why they were saying what that thing was before. So, I dig that. But as we turn the corner, there's something I'm ashamed to admit. There's and here we go. one thing about the pandemic I am going to miss. One thing. The name. I'm gonna miss having the best excuse to not have to hang out with my annoying friend Todd. I'm gonna miss. <laughs> The one thing he's going to miss is not using the excuse of the pandemic to not hang out with it. <laughs> and that's exactly what I'm talking about. That good payoff for, for that, that slow, subtle, non-comedic setup. Uh, beautifully executed. Uh, I, I dig that sort of thing all the time, man. That any, any song that does that and does it well really, really gets to me. I really dig that. <laughs> I, I love it in, in the, the second line of the chorus where, where dude, we can't kick it. <laughs> and then I lied saying, telling you over and over that I couldn't wait for this to be over. <laughs> We've all done it. Let's, let's be honest here. There's some people just uh, are more comfortable with like, no, you know what? I'm not going to go out tonight. And this is my excuse now. The national pandemic. On top of it, I lied and told him over and over that I couldn't wait for this whole thing to be over so we could get together and finally hang out. And now that we're both back to Nate, that time is now. <laughs> just, the, just the look on his face of... Well, I guess I'm doing this now. <laughs> like, it's it's the combination of, like, the sweeping shot going around him in your typical music video ballad fashion, and then just this bemused look on his face, like, ah, I guess. <laughs> just, it's it's that kind of delivery in, in the music video that, again, elevates the material beyond the, the lyrics. That's the kind of thing I like, man. Don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining. What a privilege to be vaccinated. But he still quotes Austin Powers all the time. Need I say more? He only buys jeans with holes in them. His favorite movie is 300. And he's always giving shitty advice you didn't ask for. <laughs> so this whole song is specifically about Todd. <laughs> It's not just not seeing people in general, but one specific person that you cannot stand that you're friends with because you just don't have the heart to tell them they suck. Uh, or something like that. But, but yeah, like... <laughs> in quotes, Austin Powers' favorite movie is 300. A guy just, like, apparently hasn't grown. Yeah, we all know people like that. I'm not saying I'm a person like that at all. Spider-Man shirt. All right, here we go. He only buys jeans with holes in them. His favorite movie is 300, and he's always giving shit. In that moment, taking a selfie of himself drinking a beer. Like, the what, why in your home? Taking a selfie of yourself drinking a beer in your home. Why? That's, that's a, an amazing comedy element in the background. And also, favorite movie is 300. He has a Spartan helmet that also has the cups on the end of it for uh, drinking from. That's also great background elements going on with the comedy in this. 
Latin powers Take all the that. time. Need I say more? Yeah. He only buys jeans with holes in them. His favorite movie is 300, and he's always giving shitty advice you didn't ask for. <laughs> I really miss my dog, dude. You know what would really help you? Paleo diet. Again, I'm so grateful we're finally getting through this. Would he like references Reservoir Dogs to justify why he never tips? <laughs> he, he references Reservoir Dogs to justify why he never tips. If you've seen Reservoir Dogs, that's the whole opening sequence. That's the whole cold open of the movie, which I feel like they're going to stop the music again here and, and talk about, so I'm going to shut up. It's like Mr. Pink says, why should I tip just because society tells me I have to? Oh, Jesus Christ. I think they overcharged. I'm going to miss <laughs> having the best excuse to not totally so to hang out with my annoying friend Todd. Sick. I'm going to miss <laughs> being able to say to <laughs> <laughs> just, just Le, Le Joie hanging out in the foreground, shaking his head while Todd snaps a dick pic. Oh man, expert crafted, expertly crafted. The the amount of of jokes going on outside of what the lyrics are saying. Bravo! This is some high tier quality comedy video. Excellent. Wish we could hang, to so sad we can't. And then he said, watching 300 so good. And he replies, sick. Just, it's it's quality, man. It's so good. I have to hang out with my annoying friend, Todd. <laughs> I'm rewatching. being able to say to <laughs> I wish we could kick it, but the government says we can And then shows it to him. <laughs> in the end to have the luxury to once again be really fucking annoyed <laughs> by our friends it's a great sentiment <laughs> I will forever be in debt to all the beautiful and brilliant humans you in some way or another have helped carry us through this thing and continue to do so every day What an incredible gift and privilege to be able to be annoyed by my friends in person once again. Thank you. It's true. I, I just don't understand how going paleo is going to help me with my grief. Look, there's, just don't eat grains, okay? Humans have only been eating grains for like 10,000 years. Sometimes I just want you to listen to me. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is my favorite part. This is <laughs> His favorite part is the part that was in every trailer. Oh, man, that's quality stuff. <laughs> and then, or and now, I should say, uh, we move on from that, finally, to probably one of the most popular songs uh, in this three-video run. This is from uh, about a month or so ago, maybe a little bit more. Uh, Il Neige, who is a comedy artist who does a series of videos called Rock That Pokemon. Uh, and uh, also does a lot of music for uh, Dominic Noble's channel, uh, but also does a lot of uh, other comedy music, has written a parody of Nickelback's photograph called Look at This Pokesnap. And let me tell you, this is one of the ones that I, as a person who writes comedy songs about video games, I wish I had thought of. This is the second song of Ilnage's that he's done this. He has a parody of Mr. Brightside called Mr. Darkside about Kylo Ren that once again is is just that that pop culture genius that uh, that I really really love and that's exactly the type of music that I do. Uh, it kind of you know it nerdy comedy music. So uh, uh, yeah, absolutely bravo just on those two wins alone. This song went viral and has been on CNN and Game Rank and all sorts of Game, Ran Game Rant. 
keep saying game rank, but game rant, which is, uh, I think, an offshoot of screen rant. Uh, but yeah, uh, it, it got a lot of media coverage and went viral and stuff, and uh, uh, as it should, I mean, already this visual of doing the Chad Kroger look at this photograph meme, but with the Pokesnap from, from Pokemon Snap, the pictures that he's printed out of his exploits of finding Pokemon and taking their picture and throwing apples at them. Already genius. Look at this Pokesnap, a Bulbasaur taking a nap. <laughs> For a second thought he was dead, till I threw an apple at his head. Perfect. Professor called me one day, <laughs> gave me a camera and a tank. <laughs> Said I needed to document An island full of fire-breathing pets So many new Pokemon I haven't played since 151 Yeah, uh, only 151 Pokemon when I when they first came out with the game And they're like, like, like 300, 500, 800 now, something like that I don't know. I've no, I, I, I little tiny confession. I have never played Pokemon. I've never played a single Pokemon game. No, I take that back. I played Pokemon Pinball at a display in a Best Buy once. That is the only Pokemon game I have ever played. Uh, and yet I have two songs about Pokemon. Ha ha. Uh, no, this is <laughs> this is already a uh, uh, genius and. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know how many Pokemon there are, because I've never played, but yes. This is clearly for the new Pokemon Snap game on Switch. And the camera was a Switch. And he opens the book, and the only note is, get to work, Professor. Perfect. Don't think I've ever heard of Buffalant. <laughs> I haven't. And when the hell did Todd get so hot? <laughs> Different Todd, obviously not the Todd from the previous video. <laughs> I guess I'll go and explore Too bad this lens can't zoom in more I can barely see from that far Oh, how the hell was that one for stars? <laughs> okay, I haven't played Pokemon Snap, but I did watch uh, Game Grumps playing it. Because <laughs> I played it not, not too long ago. And so some of this I'm getting, the throwing apples. I know that's in the original Pokemon Snap, too to get their attention and and uh, the zoom not being great and the ranking system being completely arbitrary uh also uh for people who follow my music videos il neige was in one of my videos he was in the video for internet famous uh so you know thanks garrett for being in that uh he's uh many people many internet stars are throughout that video many uh of these internet channels that i follow on the youtubes are there, as well as the lead singer of the President of the United States of America, Chris Ballou, and Il Neige and Chris Ballou appear together through editing, obviously. But, uh, you know, thankful to have him in that video to kind of lend some credibility to my stuff. <laughs> oh, come on, just get closer. Well then, that's, uh, that is disturbing, and it's a great lyric, too. Bravo. <laughs> and just the stunned nature of taking the picture is because of that. It's great. Now I'm starting to see that everything revolves around me. <laughs> I thought Sounded a bit absurd until I made friends with this bird. <laughs> hey, look, it's Mugganium. Let's get some pics for my Instagram. I'll bust out of this creative rut by putting sunglasses on his butt. <laughs> Professor said it'd be neat <laughs> if Magic Carbon Pidgeot could meet. I'd be happy to grant his wish. Hey, wait, did I just murder that fish? Oh. 
Again, elements in the visuals beyond what the song is doing. Jokes that don't distract from the lyrics, but bring them up. The oak that I just murdered that fish because the bird swooped and got the Magikarp out of the water. And then, oh god, why? Cutting him crying in the shower. There's some, there's a, there's a certain genius about something that, that elevates your joke beyond just what the lyrics are already saying. Because the, the lyrics are already funny because, yeah, bird type and a fish type meeting, that's going to be a problem. And then getting a picture of that and then what your reaction is after that. Because nature. Or whatever. If Magic Carp and Pidgeot could meet, I'd be happy to grant his wish. Hey, wait, did I just murder that fish? <laughs> oh, God, why? Just the wide eyed stares he keeps doing. But it got a great picture. <laughs> Oh, poor Pikachu. <laughs> that's a great line. I'm feeling ill because I'm the villain. Ooh, that's an excellent rhyme. Dig that. <laughs> You're wondering how I captured that. Please don't ask me how I captured that. <laughs> Perfect. Bravo. Oh god, my throat hurts. Hey everybody, it's Nej, and this video, like all the others, was brought to you by my patrons, who continue to support this constant flow of nonsense that is my life. Go uh go and check out Il Nej's channel and his Patreon. Uh that was phenomenal. All of these videos were great. Uh, hope you enjoyed those. Thanks for sticking around till the end. Uh, and of course, so you can see the uh, my list of patrons on my Patreon. If you join my Patreon, you can help me make more of these videos, some of my own songs, get those early, these videos early as well, vote in polls on what I'm reacting to next, and all sorts of other stuff like that. That's what this little link on the screen is for patreon.com slash insaneian. If you don't want to do that, please at least like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye.